Um, so I have another title for this talk, and it's called like making your security policy auditable. Um, security policies. Uh, well, when they are not implemented or when they are badly implemented can cost millions or billions. And um, in general, people do that uh, like checkbox-driven security, right? We implemented some process which was completely useless, but hey, it's not our fault. Um, sometimes they do real security. In both cases, you will probably have audits. And um, just very short word on risk management. The problem of security is, is there's no business value. Not a lot of people are willing to spend money on a thing that has no business value. So if you want to do that properly, you need to assess it through risk management. And risk management is evaluating the costs of the risk, evaluating the costs of the mitigating action, and more importantly, at the end, it's putting a name on the person we decided to implement the action or not. Once you put a name, believe me, you will have a lot more security-oriented actions. Um, so I have this use case, and it's not like simple CRUD access. Is hey, I want people to access their salary or access the salaries of their like direct reports. So it's a bit more involved. And I come from a Java background. I've been using Spring a lot in my life. Uh, who here is also from a Java background? Oh, amazing. Who has never heard about Spring before? Great. <laughs> Done. Um, so um, in the Spring ecosystem, there is this thing called Spring Security, uh, called SCG Security before, and it basically handles everything around security. It handles authentication, authorization, it has protection against exploits, integration with everything. And if we check our use case, it's not simple role-based. As I mentioned, you need to like have this policy implemented on the data itself. In general, it's just, hey, I'm this role, can I access this uh, URL? Yes, no. Here, it, it's a bit more involved. So uh, if you know about Spring and Spring Security, there are a couple of alternatives, the authentication object itself, and then otherwise you could have an access decision voter, or um, this is a simple example. I handle everything through an authentication object. And this is actually where, I don't see, it's big enough. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Um, so the idea is, okay, I got this URL and I want to uh, check this uh, salary info. I check the authorization, no authorization, no access. Then I can check the account itself. And if I have no account, no, it doesn't work. Then is it my own salary? Yes, or then I need to check the hierarchy. Um, so I will go to the code itself, and sorry, oh, it's not the right one. It's not the right one. And normally uh, I should be here, pull me, no, here. Two seconds, please. That, yeah, Never tell any, anybody that I do Python, please. I have my pride. Actually, I'm very happy to do all my scripting now in Python. I tried with uh, Kotlin scripting, and it does, didn't work that good. Um, so you know, I, I have this uh, like code here that does. Th this is the what I call the secure boot application, and as you can see, it's very easy. I, I'm using Kotlin, by the way, because I love Kotlin. Uh, but for scripting, it's not that good. Um, so I, I, I configure everything in the code, and I have this token authentication manager that does everything for me. Uh, and I have like the two steps I have mentioned before. The first thing is I will check if there is any credential. Uh, if I have credentials, then I check the uh, accounts. There is no salting. There is no nothing. I just pass the stuff as it is. I get the details, and I check the path that I uh, would like to access. 
And if the path is myself, then it's fine. If not, then I need to again ask something else. In that case, it will be the, the, data, the same database, but another table. Okay, is it my direct report? If everything is good, then I access the data. And so if I do Docker Compose, Docker Compose, Compose up. And now I don't know why, but it has decided to slip a bit. Oh, I saw fatal. I don't like fatal. I hope. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's the demo effect, my friends. Uh, a defining class pass resource, exception entity enable to create service. An, an, uh, okay, so perhaps then uh, I am able to do something like this. Um, Spring data source dialect. What do you think? Uh, class name. Let's do that. Postgres. Let's do it again. I have no clue what happened. And the fun part is not the first time I do this talk, it's the <laughs> and it works. Okay, amazing. Um, uh, okay, now I can do the curl, so I will curl local, uh, I don't remember the, so it must be control or finance, yes. Um, so uh, you don't see to, perhaps you can switch your seat, it will be easier for you. Um, so I'm Alice. No, everything is down. <laughs> uh, what can I tell you? Otherwise, I will do without the demo, which is also good because I don't have that much time. Evil API, no, it's not this one, fixed root, no, it's not audit security, yes. What didn't, API 6 didn't work. Uh, if I start now by hand, amazing. It's amazing. No, I'm, I'm going through the, uh, you off your rights. Thanks a lot. No, I'm not going through the API getaway. Now I need to, thanks. Sorry, I'm super stressed because I have 30 minutes. Thanks a lot. Um, so I'm Alice, I can access my, um, my salary. Um, Bob is the manager of Alice, so he can access Alice's salary. Bob can access his own salary, but Alice can access Bob's salary because, of course, it's not a great policy if you can access your boss salary. Right? It's not... Well, ah! <laughs> Let's say that for most companies, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a sign of maturity, but not all uh, companies have this maturity. Anyway, I have the requirements, and, and, and this is how I must do it. Okay, um, that's really nice and dandy, so it works. Um, so as I mentioned, the policy is inside of the code. So what I've shown you is buried deeply, and how can you audit that? Well, you will need to have somebody who knows Java, who can make sure that the code is actually what is uh, inside the build. And, well, it, it's not great. So we can have a couple of alternatives. The first thing, we can have events and logs and have observability, and probably it would work. But the problem is, first, you need to have the running system to have this. So if you have an audit in general, you have a static analysis and a dynamic analysis, and if you want to do the audit before you deploy it, um, you want something better. Um, so again, as I mentioned, you have two ways to, to cope with that. The, the first thing is checkbox driven. Don't do it, please. Um, or you have a regular audit. And if you are an auditor who is not familiar with string security, it won't work super well. So there is this thing called policy as code that allows you to define in a like neutral language your policy. It has a couple of benefits. It's, it's text, so it can be read as well. Uh, it's versionable, 
you can put it in your Git repository as you did before. And of course, you can review it and you can audit it. There are a couple of uh, tools that are available for that. Um, Open Policy Agent is the one I will be using in the demo, but there are alternatives like Cedar or Google Zanzibar. Um, as for Open Policy Agent, the idea is to have a unified tool set, again, that is language independent, that is tech independent, to define your policies. And in the end, you have a Boolean, yes, I access it, or no, I don't access it. So I can change my um, uh, architecture to replace the policies that I have created in my code by an OPI runtime instance. So how do you define this configuration? Uh, and that's where it's not that great. Uh, something called a language called Rego, which looks a bit like JavaScript, but not entirely. And the requirements that I told you, I want uh, people to access their own salary and uh, people to access the salary of their um, direct report looks like this. Um, I define uh, the hierarchy first. I will have so the, the employees in the hierarchy. By default, I disallow everything, which is always a good idea. And then I can access my own salary. So here I will have... Yes. So uh, I will allow if the user matches the path. This is what I define in the code anyway. And then I can define some variable called username. I will put username as the path. And if any time I have the username in the user input, then it will work. So there are two things that are missing for you to understand everything is what this data stuff. Well, data is actually static data that you define in your OPA stuff. Generally, you would create it, it would be a derived uh, data from your existing data, but I was too lazy to do it, so I duplicated it. But this is something that how it would like. And then uh, the input is actually the requests that you would send uh, to the OPA. So this is dynamic because actually the path is dynamic, the user is dynamic. If we replace it, so now I can do this. And I go to this commit. <laughs> I will stash. Okay, I will do it by hand, it will be easier. Uh, git stash, and then I can go here. And I git stash pop, and again, I have no clue why it requires me to have the driver pop. Okay, uh, and of course, now it tells me that A darker compose up. So while it starts, of course, what happens? That's the I, I'm doing debug live debugging. So far, it has been working. Here, I'm not sure. Uh, security OPA uh, platform. Docker compose down, Docker compose up. Okay, meanwhile, while it starts, I can go back to my security config. And um, so it's still the same. The token authentication, however, has been changed. So now, instead of uh, checking the database for um, the response, I, I uh, have, uh, I, I call the OPA instance, the running OPA instance, uh, through a, a simple request. And I can send uh, data 
and receive data. So here, the uh, OPI input looks like this. I have a data input, which is the user and the pass. And if you remember, I have the user and the pass. So this is exactly what I, I, I told you before. And on the outputs, which I don't find anymore here, I have the result. The result is a Boolean. This is as expected. I should have yes or no. And based on this output, if it's a low, yes, it works. If it does a low, no, it doesn't work. Uh, let's do a simple test again. So Alice access Bob's. No, it doesn't work. Alice access Alice. Yes, it works. Bob ac um, access Alice. Yay, it works. Amazing. Um, we can go a bit further yet. The thing is, here, what I did is I was still using Apache API 6, but you didn't see it, just to actually uh, put in place the data on which um, OPI would run. If you, if, well, I have a bit of time here. I have this bundles.data because OPI is just the engine. You need to, to, to set it uh, data, to configure it with data. And the data here is this like bundle which I don't find anymore. It's bundles data. Mm. So it's a, it's a, this uh, shared folder. Sorry, I lose my words. Is this shared folder uh, between API six and the bundler? So now I have this bundler that actually creates the bundle uh, from the policy. So I have this authorize.rego, which is the stuff that I've shown you, and the data JSON, again, which is should be derived data, but here I'm too lazy. I'm just rewritten everything. So I'm already using Apache API 6, and this is the stuff. Now, normally, every time I should I change this, I change the uh, hierarchy, I should refresh the bundle. And just one word about Apache API 6. Uh, it's a pretty like mature project, not 10 years like we have seen so far, uh, but it became uh, a TLD project in 2020. So one year uh, to graduate is not that bad. You are familiar with the fact, uh, with the graduation process in the Apache Foundation, right? Yeah, great. Um, it's based on the uh, super mature and famous Nginx um, uh, reverse proxy. It's a really good reverse proxy, but the open source version, if you need to change the configuration, and I have 10 minutes, I need to, to, you need to switch it off and on again. So out reload, if you have something that sits at the front of your information system, is really a must, and if you need to switch it off and off, it's not that great. So. For that, to cope with that, you have OpenResty project. Who is familiar with OpenResty? Okay, it's a Lua, en <laughs> yeah. it's a Lua engine uh, that allows you to do um, changes on configuration via uh, Lua scripting. So it's really, really good. But the, 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 configuration, uh, the configuration format maps exactly the one of Nginx. Um, if, you, if you want to really manage uh, um, something at scale, it's not the best format. So for that, we have Apache API 6. It brings abstractions, such as what is a route, what is a service, and everything is plugin based. So now we still uh, need to do something um, if you want to, to go uh, uh, the, the full uh, nine yards, is we have authorization. We have moved authorization out of the code. We also need to move authentication out of the code. We are still doing manual authentication. Um, so API 6 allows several uh, integrations with Keycloak, with OpenID Connect, with its own stuff. Um, but here, I will be doing my own stuff. So I will be directly reading. 
So now, as I mentioned, we keep Apache API 6, but we use it not only to serve static file, but to do authentication. And now, see, we have the app and OPA, and we don't rely on the database anymore. Let's do that. So I will stop my Docker Compose. Docker Compose down. Docker stash. Docker stash. <laughs> <laughs> Git stash. Yeah. Git status. Git add dot. Git stash. Git checkout monster. Git stash pop, and please, no, doesn't want to be merged. OK, OK, if you want. So now I won't access the application directly. I will go through uh, Apache API 6, Docker Compose up. I would like to swear in Chesh, but I can't. Who is Chesh here? Uh, no, Slovak. <gasps> so, so you are Slovak, right? But Apple Strudel is not Slovak, right? Yeah, it's like saying that, I don't know, Indian make very good, um, like, um, something from Italy, tiramisu. Yeah, probably, in some places. But we can't generalize, right? Um, so now I have my, uh, you see, I, I don't have any authentication at all. I've just, like, changed my security config to just check the decision because the authorization is configured in Apache API 6. I've also done something a bit uh, like funny, is here in this case, I'm actually uh, reading data and directly uh, configuring Apache API 6 through curl when it starts. So here, I didn't do anything, it's automated, but all the uh, people, all the, the, the accounts are directly configured, so normally, I should do like this. So if I curl Bob, Bob already exists in Apache API 6, normally. Yeah, of course, now it's 90, 80. Yes. And Bob access its, his own salary, which is OK. And now Alice. And now it's Apache API 6 that will tell me something is wrong but you don't see it because uh, it doesn't send JSON, so we need to, to, to set the verbose version, and then we can see we have a 401. So now we are, we are sure that it's Apache API 6 that is uh, actually doing something. Uh, perfect. So um, the demo is still not perfect, uh, and yeah, regardless of the little issues that I had. Um, at the moment, I still have the duplication of hierarchy in the DB and in OPA. I, I was too lazy. You can do the same stuff, like basically uh, having some uh, job that actually reads from uh, the, um, the database and, and string the changes. And Rego is not a super great language, um, but still we have something that is working. Um, so you need to be like um, prepared that audits are going to be more and more frequent, uh, either because companies want to have uh, like plausible deniability that they have did, they did everything they could to prevent some security bad stuff, or because they actually care about it. 
And in, uh, for that, um, you need to do something on your side, on the engineering side. So burying your code inside the, the app is not, I, I don't think it's going to cut it anymore. So if you want to go this way, OPA and Apache API 6, Apache API 6 make a great duo. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. Um, if you think it's dead, I think it's dead. You can follow me on Mastodon, on Blue Sky, or on anything that is I'm on. If you are, if you want to see uh, the code, everything is on GitHub. But I'm using I'm using Gitly uh, links because I want to check how many people are actually interested in the code. And uh, well, there is a link about Apache API 6. And uh, four minutes. <laughs>